Herminio Prudencio Velasquez Jr., Hermi, or Hermin, to those of you close to him, joined our creator on February 28, 2021, due to post-stroke and post-COVID complications. While our family is hurting right now, missing him dearly, still, we are so thankful for the wonderful years he shared with all of us. Daddy lived a full life of 81 years. Please allow me to share with you a brief version of his life journey. Born in Manila on June 19, 1939, to Herminio Sr. and Silvestra, Daddy was the eldest of three brothers. Daddy grew up as a true anak ng Pasig, having lived over 60 years across three places in Pasig. First, their ancestral home in P. Gomez, near Plaza Rizal, then to their Santolan home, and finally settling down in Bambang after marrying our mommy, Erlinda Gabriel, who first caught his eye as a junior when Daddy was a senior in Rizal High School in 1955. Daddy was gifted with a creative mind and an artistic hand. After high school, he completed a two-year program on architectural drawing at the Philippine School of Arts and Trade before transferring to Mapua to continue with BS Architecture. After staying steady for a decade, Daddy and Mommy tied the knot in June 1967. Daddy worked as an architectural draftsman in Makati for multinational engineering firms Adrian Wilson and TransAsia. From what I learned, he was a beloved and funny co-worker. He had a sideline selling anything and everything to his office mates, from umbrellas, to blankets, to sandwiches, and yes, he even sold lingerie. Daddy was also a star on the company bowling, scrabble, and chess tournaments. Our family grew with Ate Hedy, born in 1968, Kuya Irwin in 1971, and then me in 1974. Daddy built a small house annexed to the Gabriel ancestral home in Bambang. Daddy and Mommy also started a bakery, a small business they operated for almost 20 years. The next life chapter started in 1980, when Daddy took on more international assignments. Over the next 12 years, he would work overseas, Hawaii, Singapore, Indonesia, Korea, Japan, and back to Korea for his last time. I can remember fondly taking turns on overseas calls, opening the Lake Mayan boxes, and that one summer vacation we all had in Okinawa as a complete family. Being away from family was a huge sacrifice for Daddy. He was someone who would easily get homesick and could only endure short international assignments, except for when Mommy lived with him in Okinawa and in Seoul. So in 1992, I was in college then, Daddy decided to come home for good. He chose to do local work as a designer, builder, and contractor of residential homes. Many of his friends still call him architect. When mommy would ask him why he keeps saying no to large construction projects which could have made him more money, daddy was quick to explain that he doesn't like to engage in negative practices common in construction for the government. Daddy was a very honest contractor. He was happy with modest income and the fulfillment of seeing a family come to love their new or remodeled home. Around this time, daddy also started getting more involved in church activities. He was active with Couples for Christ and Prex he also became a Eucharistic minister and a member of the Pastoral Council of the Immaculate Conception Parish in Pasig. This was a new but welcome side of him that we all enjoyed seeing. Socially, he was part of a badminton club and he played with a regular group of golf buddies. In 2002, we were blessed with the opportunity to take on Daddy's dream project. Daddy built and co-designed with Ate Sharon and Kuya Irwin a three-family home in Town & Country Executive Village in the Antipolo lot that our parents invested in years before. Daddy, already a lolo of three kids then, lived literally next door as all three Velasquez families moved into this dream home. In that same decade, opportunities to migrate to the U.S. came. It was 2000 for Ate Hedy, 2004 for Kuya Irwin and family, and 2007 for Sherlene, Raphael, and me. Daddy and mommy flew to the U.S. many times to visit and help us get settled. Uh, they were in L.A. when Caitlin, Queer Irwin's youngest daughter, was born in 2005. They were in New Jersey from 08 to 2011, helping us care for Rafael as I completed my school and started my work in Washington, D.C. In 2009, Daddy and Mommy finally decided to live in the U.S. permanently so they can be closer to our families and, of course, closer to their grandchildren. Daddy and Mommy became U.S. citizens five years later. They lived with us in Richwood, New Jersey. They also lived with Queer Irwin in Ontario and most of the time with Ate Hedy in our Lola Demi's small house in LA. In 2018, they were given the opportunity to live in their very own apartment 
in Wilshire Towers, where they have since been happily living on their own, where they have met new friends, and where they have been staying in lockdown mode since the pandemic started. Our daddy was a happy, humble, funny, kind-hearted, and family-first man. Nothing else was more important to him than the love for his family and the care he can give to our mommy, and the support he can provide to his children and grandchildren. He lived simply and would choose paying for memorable experiences rather than expensive possessions. He loved watching movies and sports. He was always eating something and is never without an appetite. He would gladly drive for his grandchildren every time we needed him to. We will never forget how daddy and mommy, with no questions asked, would come to help us on each of the five times we moved houses in New York and in New Jersey. While we know that he loved his children very much, I actually suspect that daddy loved his grandchildren even more. While daddy was a very good father to us, I actually believe that he was an even better grandfather to his four apos. Lola Hermi beamed with unending pride on each and every achievement that Bea and Kate and Raph shared with him. From their academic achievements, to their artwork, to athletic highlights in volleyball or basketball, Lolo Hermi loved and cherished every single moment. He would endlessly watch and re-watch all these videos on YouTube. We are so thankful for the love, pride, and joy his four grandkids gave him. It made up for the time he sacrificed working abroad and missing our growing up years. Of course, Daddy's one true love is our mommy. He has this unconditional love that Kuya Irwin and I aspire to give to Ate Sharon and to Shirley. Daddy prepared breakfast every day for mommy. They prayed together and heard mass together. They held hands as they walked. They were always together. Daddy brought us so many priceless memories, his corny jokes, his famous lines, his unforgettable antics. But really the most unforgettable were his daily acts of kindness, his selflessness and constant love. To our dearest mommy, please know that daddy will be watching all of us from his comfortable chair in heaven. And just like how much he enjoyed watching his apos play their sports, this time around daddy will surely love watching how we will all take our turn in caring for you the way he showed us. We love you daddy, we love you Lolo Hermi, rest now and continue to watch us and watch over us from heaven.